Hi, I'm Christian Guzman, and I approve of the Board Shorts and Banter podcast. An error has encountered. Hmm. Hello? 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 You all hear me? Sound. From me? I can hear you, Josh C. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear, I can hear Tom. I can hear Josh Crogan as well. Do you know what it, I can hear Josh as well. Come on. I can, I can hear both Joshes. Yeah. What the fuck is up with this? Why is there no sound? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, I'm going to keep that in. That's class. Oh, what? Could you hear me? Mate, you can hear you the whole time. Oh, yeah. Oh. You're just there panicking, panicking, mate. Panic stations. I was. And then I could see it counting down three, two, one. I was thinking, I'm going to look like a Wally. <laughs> I, like the, uh, I like the comb over. Thank you. It's my fresh out of the shower look. Do you, know, you, you look like uh, something out of like Peaky Blinders or like, I don't know, like a war film, you know? Yeah, yeah. I get you. Old school. Yeah, I look like yeah, Killian yeah. Murphy. Yeah, you're not, you're, quite, like, mate. you're not. You're not that good looking. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I'd say Josh C actually looks more like Killian Murphy. I am Josh C. I mean, I'm, that's a good point. Is it? Is it Killian or Cillian? That's it all. Hey, if you say it. Cillian, there's only one Cillian here, and it's you. Hey. Uh, Josh C, what's that you got? What, what are you drinking? Strawberry well, hydroflow. Very. Mm. Pretty nice, mate. This is uh this is the best thing for hydration. What is it? Is it right just normal? Just normal Pepsi Max. Just the Pepsi Max. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's optimal. Extremely optimal. And then, you, and then you got <laughs> look at you both, right, with your your big water. That's and that's me just that's nailing the. the uh... Is that all you drink? You don't even drink water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just make sure I get five liters a day, but just well, if this is so, I get a drink fifteen of these. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, Tom relies on like soaking water up whilst he's in the shower. Yeah, that's mm. a... yeah, yeah. Do you know like the, the I call it like the Tom Stockton wrinkly hand protocol. Like I don't yeah. get out the out the <laughs> bath until my hands are gonna wrinkly. That's when you know you're fully saturated. Yeah, that's why I used to do about osmosis. Knees were battered during prep, and I had to go for a bath like most nights for like half an hour, and it was just wrinkles all over. Horrible. Did you have Did you have a demon in your knees? Um, no, it's just like they started to season up, like when I was walking, when I was really, really lean, like after a couple thousand steps, and then my knees, or my leg, sorry, got stupid flat, because they were shit in general, but they got very flat, and um, to try and kind of drop off like inflammation and keep them fresher, like just have them float for like 30 minutes and uh, Epsom salt bath, so, but yeah, I mean, it was horrible, because it was like roasting hot as well, and oh, it was disgusting. Like you're oh, imagine so energy and you're just sat there like in a pure steamy room, like trying to work on my phone. And it's like nearly slipping out my hands, and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm terrified here." I can imagine, right? In like in Las Vegas, right? You're in the bath, soaking. The room's all steamy. Yeah. Finn and Reese just yeah. walk in, right? Have you seen the and they've, oh, they've both got one. Re- Reese is carrying like a bottle of like a uh, baby oil. <laughs> Reese has got no. Finn's got like cucumbers in a face mask. And then they're oh, just yeah. there, like caress- caressing you because, like, you're the promised child. Have and then, and then, oh. and then, and then Finn just whispers in your ears, like, "If you dare <laughs> fucking lose this competition, <laughs> I'll fucking end you." <laughs> Tom, the- yeah, I don't think your mic's working. Why? I can you hear. Don't sound crispy. Oh. Why not? Right, we're back, people. Little interim right there. We just had to uh, take a little pit stop. I've sorted out my microphone. We sound we sound crispy. And uh, Josh C is also upgraded as well. I got the mic on. It's the first time I've used it in like a month or two, but it sounds, sounds nice and crisp for you lot. Yeah, sounds good, mate. Sounds good. But uh, anyway, yeah. So as we... Well, we kind of got off to a weird introduction there, but anyone... Well, everyone, sorry. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have the one, the only, the better Josh C, not Josh Crogger. Wow. Oh, yeah. We've got the Scottish man himself. Welcome. Thank you very much, boys. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, this this is this is your second time on the podcast, even though you might be coming on again on that pre-recorded one that we did for the future. Yeah? Yes, Great. sir. Mm. So technically, you're going to be, well, this is going to be your third one. Third. Am I man the reigning champ then of the appearances on the podcast? Yeah, we we need to get you a match ball for for like a hat trick. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know how. Mate, it's just like you. It's just like you uh, gravitate success. Like you're the most winningest 
member and you know attendee of the BSNB podcast. Thank you, Natural Mister Olympia. It's a uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty good thing. And yeah. All In, you're sponsored by All In now as well, mate. How's mm-hmm. how yeah. how have you enjoyed being on the team so far, mate? Oh, it's class. Um, very good. Going down to Manchester was very fun. That was a good experience. That was some laugh on it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just like yeah. overall, like the quality of the products and everything to be able to actually just get these for free each month. It's like yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, what code? Can, what what code can people use to uh, to support you and the company? Can use code Josh C for myself, mm-hmm. and then they can use code BSB for you mm-hmm. too. It, BSB is um, like less effort. And you're helping more people. Mm. So mm. if I was a listener, <laughs> I would use BSB. Yeah. Well, mm. um, you know someone you... else be announced by this point as well. By this is out. We won't mm. risk it. Yeah. We won't someone else it. is joining us. Yeah, we can blue ball the listeners. They can yeah. guess yeah. if they want. They can guess in the comments. All I'm all I'm gonna call him her is the future. You never know. They, they him. Maybe they even identify as an Apache um, attack helicopter. Z-Z-Z-R. You just don't know. Exactly, penguin, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that? Do you know there's like kids identifying as cats and dogs in oh, school now? Do you not see the thing about the school that has put like litter things like, like for places for the person to shit because they're pretending to be a cat? <laughs> yeah, Get I'm, out of here. I'm <laughs> certain this school is in like the South Yorkshire Derbyshire yeah, region. I've seen it on like TikTok or something a while ago or on the news. I can't remember what it was, but imagine that. You look imagine old that someone's panda shit on like a wee tree. Oh, it'd just be awful. Like imagine being a teacher nowadays. Like I've got clients that are teachers, and one of my best mates is a teacher, and I d- I just feel sorry for him. It's completely different to when we were at school. Like, and I'm probably going to say like you as well, Josh. Like, the times have changed a lot yeah. recently. It's wild. Yeah, I might have been one of them. You might be offending me right now. Maybe I, I don't care. Mm. I'm joking. I do care. I care about all genders, even if they are made up. Like yeah. cats. This is where we get Josh on, right? And he's like, we're like, oh yeah, we're gonna have a good chat to him about his prep, and he's just there, like, <laughs> meow. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, fucking goes, goes and curls a off-season yeah, spends... log out in his litter tray in the corner of the room. <laughs> oh, God. Spend a couple of nights with me at Arnold's and you realise hey. I'm one of them, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Scratch so that brings us... <laughs> Yeah. That brings... in the middle of the night. <laughs> that brings us on perfectly to my first topic of conversation that I've got written down in my notebook. Nice. The Arnold's. Yeah, boy. All in are going... To the Arnolds, and therefore we are also going to the Arnolds. Seems mad, mad, absolutely mad. I planned to go for a while. Like I booked, it. I'm going down with thing. We Matt, Josh's client. Um, all there's a good few of the Scottish boys from pro life and gyms surrounding. Like we're all mates, um, and I'm going to have a videographer down with me as well. So I won't be staying with you. I don't believe because we've all got our own place and all. And Fuck I'll, yeah. I'll give you false hope exactly um but yeah i should be there for like the whole weekends we're there for friday saturday sunday are you just training at ultimate ultimate fitness is that what it's called i have no training? idea i am I going know. where the wind takes yeah me. it's the same with me like i've had people ask me like oh where are you training at what time and i'm just like i don't fucking know I'm yeah no clue. i'm just like there's a um there's a gym it. There's a gym not too far from the NEC called Dino's Gym, where I remember like mm. back in the day when like CG used to come over and you know I all Steve so called the, all the boys. The video of the guy with Wesley. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. him. Mm-hmm. That's Big Dino. Yeah. I would like to go there because that's a little bit more you know old school. It's completely well, different yeah. to the norm. And I've obviously like me and Tom's trained uh, Ultimate before, so yeah, I wouldn't mind if it, having a session then. As well, you are Emporium Gym. I get yep. by Leon Emmanuel, you know, that Lewis Emmanuel. Yeah, Do you know that is his little brother. Um, I competed with him. He said that that place is pretty good, that's quite old school as well. So, just need to see what happens. But it's gonna be a good weekend. It's nice. first, first time in Birmingham. Mm, no, I must have competed there once because the only reason, <laughs> only reason I know that is because do you know the burger place, Hanbao? Hanbao. H-A-N-B-A-O, Hanbao. Um, I had that scouted out for my whole season because I knew there was one show in Birmingham and I was like, I'm going to go there post-show, but then I never ended up getting the permission to have a post-show meal 
and I've been dying for it since, and now I'm going to actually go there, and I cannot wait. Josh, go I, there. I'm keen. I think, I think the invited. only natural show that was there was the WMBF, and you didn't do that, did you? That would have been what it is. Yeah. There you was, go. Was the, was the finals in Birmingham? Yeah. Yep, that's what it was then, because I knew one of the shows I wanted to go there because it was like close enough. And yes, because that would have been my last show. And I was like, oh, I could eat whatever I wanted, and I was going to go there. But obviously that didn't end up happening. I went down the international route. But oh yeah, this place looks ridiculous. I don't know. I can't what? share my screen or anything, can I? No, not really. Well, unless unless Tom's figured it out. I can't. I'll just no, show you I, don't, that, I don't think I, I can. Put up against the, the camera. Oh, mm. baby. For any mm. any audio listeners, that's just the most sexiest burger you'll ever see. I feel, I feel like YouTube pre- right this second and go watch that. I could do one of them, to be honest. Man, Shut I'm for off-plan meals right now. Are we? Are we going? Are we going there? I'm up for it. Poor Come Matt's on. not going to be able to go. Why? I've told him he can have an off-plan meal. Hey, we've all been fucking ripping the piss out of him in the group chat for saying that he can't eat anything. Oh, uh-huh. mate, he's Matt, Matt's Matt's way ahead of schedule. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah, that we good can, then. He can go and have a nice time with the boys. You know they they like supply you with like kind of like latex gloves because it's that like fucking juicy and sloppy. That, like they they give you gloves. No, nah, I don't want gloves. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, uh, it's like low, low, thin gloves. I'll catch, the, I'll, ca- I'll catch the grease in my arteries. That's where I'll catch it. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to let it drip. I'm just going to be like licking it like an ice cream. Yeah. I'm just going to get the burger, it. pick it up, ring yeah. it into my mouth. Yeah, Drop like that. Just, just like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy. Oh. Yes. It will start floating up on mine. But... um. Yeah, so we we I've put up a question box on uh, Instagram to get some cues last minute for this. I don't know if you boys got any, and if there's I any interest. Up, I'm not in it, Jim. No. Well, Josh C, how is your off season going, <laughs> you my see, man? This is if there's like <laughs> not two Josh C's. <laughs> there's, there's, there's only one Josh C though. You know the the real <laughs> Josh uh, C. This... When you say Josh C, everyone knows which one I mean. You know. Yeah. There's got the you got Krog Dog, you got Krog Dog, and you got Josh C. All right, we'll take that. Off season, mate, it's going well. Um, I've started to pick up actual momentum now after not being ill constantly. Cause mm. I, every three weeks or so, I was getting like violently ill and had to like not train for a week, um, and just was like straight back to square one. Body weight would be down. I was what 10, 11 weeks post show, and I got that ill. Couldn't eat for three days, like at all, and I was the same weight that I was at the natural Olympia on show day, pretty much. So back down to like 67-ish kg and since then back into training like everything's been going well body weight is now pretty much the highest it's ever been in my entire life higher than when I started prep 74 and a half kg the heaviest I've ever been is 75 started prep last year at 73 and I've still got lines on my glutes from the side and tricep striations so I shall take it I shall take it it's the it's mad you are like the prime. That's the prime example, though. Like you are not someone that. It, I mean, I'm. I'm sure you will be able to do it. Like push your body weight harder, and like no doubt you will. But like because mm. you started prep at a lean standpoint, that yeah. definitely helped you in terms of like how 100%. smoothly your prep ran because you were in condition like very very soon, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, very early. Sorry, I came in quicker than we expected. I think like it was actually what the WMBF show was like twelve weeks into my prep. Mm. and yeah that's when they were like yeah one of the best condition at the show and i was like oh damn and then like five weeks later i was like inside out peeled that was what like 16 17 weeks into the prep and it was 33 weeks that was like 17 weeks holding stage condition but i definitely did think it played to my advantage for actually getting into condition Mm -hmm. i've been able to like refeed i was i was having a five guys every sunday um because my rate of loss was too fast and it was literally just a goal of like eat as much as you could ended up just like it would get to a point where i was like walking out of five guys like not being able to stand up right just trying to like eat as much as i could got like a big dirty like nutella and banana crepe and everything as well but yeah um like i used to struggle a lot to put food down as well like before prep like i was on 650 carb before prep and i was like oh my god this is impossible i'm doing it now and i'm like ravenous i'm starving Mm -hmm. Um and it's so easy it's digesting well. Last time I was shitting myself, um, get diagnosed with IBS by the, the doctors, 
Um, and realistically, I think it was just more so me and like my anxiety around eating. I was like, oh, my stomach's not going to, I don't know, is it going to kind of settle well here? And then, boom, that's when I would shit myself or when stress was higher, or this or that. Um, but now I've got a much better lock on all of that. So going a lot better. Josh, I have a question. Mm. Did you actually shit yourself? Um, or was it I like past, but like not, yeah. Oh no, yeah, mate. There, there was a point where there was a point where I was driving to get my message from work, and I was on the motorway, and it was like standstill traffic, and I was genuinely debating like getting just opening the door, pulling my shirt <laughs> down, just shitting all over the motorway. Like it was like really bad. Seventy mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. It was like complete standstill traffic. No one was moving at all. I was like, <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, gonna smell it. I was just, but then I was like, I can't just fucking shit myself. I'm just sitting on my own shit. And I took the next turn off, and I had a black box at the time. Um, I do still have a black box. Um, thirty mile an hour road. I'm going like seventy mile an hour down this thing. Pull into the McDonald's car park. Don't even park the car. Just jump out, run into the toilet, blow the thing up. But it was fucking better than hell. shitting in the car or on the motorway. You know, if you did but shit yeah, on the motorway. Rather mm. than having a fatal accident, it would have been a fetal accident. Ah, oh, oh. slap, slap Fe- my knee there. <laughs> you, you just said oh, fetal, <laughs> fecal, <laughs> fecal, <laughs> not like a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I don't know how right. it's out. It's <laughs> Seventy mile an hour, right? You look over, and there's a what car have you got? A golf. Well, at the, mate, at the time it was a you fucking Mazda two. You, you look over. There's a Mazda two. And you got two butt cheeks just hanging out the yeah. driver's side. Explosive just, diarrhea just, launch. Just, just, just pebble dash in the side of the car with um some explosive, yeah, yep. pre workout meal that's not gone down well. What, exactly. So I'm assuming then, obviously, would you consider yourself like obviously you've built a substantial amount of muscle mass for your age and your physique, but would you consider yourself a hard gainer then? Oh, mate, I started when I started training, I weighed 48 kg. I was skin and bone, and within about a year and a half, I think I gained 27 kg, mm-hmm. um, and I was in respectable condition, so not respectable condition, I was, wasn't was fat at all, but um, yeah, like I, I would definitely say I was, there was points where I was putting down like 5,000 calories per day, um, I thought it was clean foods, but I was just using so much like extra virgin olive oil, it was actually like, I would cook chicken, and I would like bread it. I was just chicken nuggets and wedgies, but I would have a wok and it would have like 50 mil of olive oil in it and I would cook it in that and it would soak it up. I was eating probably like 300 grams of protein per day, probably like 200 grams of fat per day and then the rest would make up with carbs. Um, but I mean, when I was in school, like I was 16 year old and then at like the first like kind of break, you know, like just the, at like half 10 after two classes, um, I had like a full portion size chicken rice that was like 130 grams of carbs and by the time I like walked down to like the kind of eating area uh, and got down there I had like seven minutes to fucking eat it and then get back up to the class would just slam that down and then for lunch as well I had uh, chicken rice and then chicken and wedges as well so like a double portion of that Um, so yeah I used to eat a lot a lot of foods I think it was 4,800 calories um, and that got me up to 75 but then for a year and a half to two years, I literally could not get above 75 to save myself. Like it just wouldn't go. Um, I would end up running into digestion issues, whatever it may be. Um, and then that's me now back to 75 kg. And it looks as if there's literally so much room to push up. So mm-hmm. it's good. It's like, I think my body needed prep in terms of like coming out of a surplus. Cause since I've been 15 years old, I've been like violently trying to push my body weight upwards and trying to eat as much as possible. My stomach couldn't handle it. And then eventually food comes down, I get a little bit leaner. Um and my stomach kind of resensitizes itself and I think it's it's better now. So we'll see. You never know in two weeks' time I could be shitting myself again. You might see me or come try to come back from Birmingham in the motorway and I'm sat there shitting my pants. I'm saying <laughs> see a brown streak down the uh, <laughs> down, down the main road towards the NEC I know exactly who I'm going to yeah. find at the end of it mate oh, um, so so I'm, I'm I'm guessing then like the, the one thing you got to remember is like you were pushing bodybuilding quite hard from a young age like not only is your body naturally going to be demanding more food because mm. you are like, even right now still physically growing you're going to be growing yeah, until yeah. you're the age of 21 like that in itself is a huge like metabolic demand you've also got tr- bodybuilding and training on top of that as well you know very good output in the gym so you know that's that's it's quite an extreme example but like you know 
young guys in a similar position to yourself like a lot of them have the same complaint and that is they cannot eat enough food they still yeah. cannot eat enough and i think that is probably like the main thing that holds most people back from actually realizing yeah, you you're not eating enough you're not going to perform well really, can't you? yeah 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 so what like so your biggest piece of advice then to someone that potentially yeah, is young see. and trying to you know gain weight but considers themselves a hard game they just what? can't get more food in yeah they're like oh yeah i can't eat enough food but then they've got absolutely fucking no structure to their life no routine wake up at complete different times every day they're sat eating at two in the morning they need to wake up and then eat straight away again I'm like of course you're not going to have an appetite of course it's not going to digest well you're not going to be gaining weight because everything's so all over the place gain some structure and consistency to your life wake up at the same time every day get your meals in at the same time every day prep your meals when you need to make sure your meals are enjoyable as well you're not going into them thinking oh fuck i really don't want to eat this like a thought of this makes me feel sick like just from just a taste and connect like I, I don't want to eat that even if your appetite was all right um but like i have a lot of people that say to me as well like oh i can't gain weight um but then again they've got absolutely no structure to everything that surrounds it so get yourself structure wake up at the same time eat your meals at the same time push your food up slowly as you go and, and you'll be sound i think learn how to cook as well oh yeah that's a massive one like, as well. actually <laughs> make the meals enjoyable actually if, make if meals meal enjoyable looks, looks if mum and dad are gonna want to eat it yeah if mum and dad are constantly making your food and you're constantly relying on like what you're having for dinner to mm. grow it's just not going to fucking happen you need to learn how to cook especially if you're like young like yeah. you may not have had that responsibility or the need to in the past it's like you need yeah. to learn that and the sooner you can learn how to make your you know meals taste good how to prep your foods properly get on that early and it's just going to make your life so so much easier i'd also say like you don't necessarily need to follow like a strict meal plan of like oh, i can only eat this and this and this but realistically i eat the exact same foods every single day and it's just so much easier i'm not faffing about my fitness pal um not trying to figure out what to eat and trying to do it all and that's just an extra stressor onto everything like just eat the same meals every day but then say one day you're like i actually really don't like that meal anymore it's just getting sick and find a different variation of it so like pre-workout just now i have like a, a wrap and chips like potatoes if i ended up getting fed up with that i would maybe have rice and mince and pita breads etc like just something that's similar um i know it's going to digest relatively well that has the same macros and boom that's that sorted but just making sure that you actually keep on top of your meals keep them enjoyable um and don't make them too repetitive and again as you say learn to cook like make sure your meals look good like if they look good and you kind of salivate as well like looking at it that's going to aid in your digestion as well so yeah um enjoy your meals too i like it yeah, boy. listen up young gu young guns out there listening and if you say, <clears throat> oh, I'm not gaining weight, you need to just eat more. And that's the, the harsh reality of it. Like, even if you are eating 4,000 calories, not everyone's going to gain on a certain amount of foods. Your body may be different. You might have higher demands and output and up your foods if your body's not going up on a kind of weekly basis on an average. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I like it. Josh, Krogan, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I, I agree with everything that you've said. So... I've obviously I've done quite a few push ups and pull downs and, and what have you. And you know, like how you said that you were, you, you held the same body weight for like a very long time. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that your, your body needs to be put under different demands every, just every few months, whether that's on like a training front or an eating front. So I, I always run what I call like a slingshot diet where you'd pull food down quite drastically for like three to six weeks and then mm -hmm. almost like resensitize and then drive back up. So like up your food again and you'll have like a greater sensitivity to the food that you're eating again. So yeah, yeah, if, you yeah are, you're, if you're eating shit every once loads, in a while. you are. Yeah. I'm saying like resetting every once in a while, if your appetite and digestion is in the bin and you're eating stupid as amount of food and it's doing nothing, like there's definitely a time and place to pull back. Mm -hmm. yeah I agree. but it's definitely not it's like, like after you know a month of oh i've only gained half a kilo it's like no that's that's still responding yeah. and you've obviously got more than one uh measurable than body weight you can look at your strength and recovery and everything it's not it's not all on body weight like you but your body can change a lot without your weight going up so yeah i, I guess this is where even... like having a coach is handy because yeah yeah, it's it's pretty tough to look at yourself subjectively. 
you know mm-hmm. and if you look it's just, at it's just it's not it's just not increasing food too quickly as well like if you simply do not have the demand yeah, for that food there yet from your training from your activity from the amount of muscle in your frame if you simply just increase that food too quickly of course you're going to run into a bit of a wall that insulin sensitivity is going to fucking die if your body's not going to be utilizing the food that you're eating and as well as that like just don't get lazy like i feel like when a lot of people do start an off season what they'll do is they'll have their step goals and their cardio goals and whatnot or maybe they don't have any cardio goals this is another thing as well and that as food goes up naturally sluggishness does you know increase as well therefore they end up still eating the same amount of food but they're moving less so of course metabolic demand is going to then drop off you know yeah, and if you're, you're then not keeping up with any cardio. cardiovascular yeah, training exactly. it's just going to help to it's going to aid digestion you know movement throughout the day aids digestion it's going to improve your insulin sensitivity therefore like you know it's going to long term improve everything so yeah just don't, just don't get lazy me at 75 kg two years ago i need to put do not disturb one because i'm getting some training videos Josh, do you know now that you're like a full-time online coach do um have you noticed that your expenditure's gone down or like you're having to make more of an effort to you know get your steps in no i get mine in relatively easy because i prepare all my check-ins in the morning while out walking um, and that gets me like a good like 3,000 steps and then I'll usually have a walk pre-workout while my chips are cooking and all then a quick walk on the treadmill before the session just to get my heart rate up and kind of switch off from work Um, walking about the gym by the time I've came in from the gym I'm on like 8,000 steps and if I want to like my step goal is like 8 to 10k if I feel like I want to before like that last meal I'll just go out on a quick walk um, to make sure it digests well but that last meal is sitting very well just now so I don't really feel the need to at the moment but yeah, I feel like it's a lot easier now that I actually have a routine with it. Like I rely on going out in that walk to actually get my work done because if I'm sat at a desk and like I'm just sitting on my phone, I find it easier to end up going on like Instagram or something to end up like reposting stories that have been tagged in. When I'm out in that walk, it's literally just only work, nothing else. Um, So I feel like that for like half an hour first thing in the morning is literally just wake up, brush my teeth, make my bed, get ready. Like make my uh, rise and shine. That's the new product that I'm having in the morning. Um, from plus, it's, it's the hydration, like nootropic and energy. Um, whack that in a big bottle, drink that while I'm out, and by the time I'm back, hydrated. Like I've been out in actual fresh air uh, mm. and sunlight for what half an hour. You just feel so much fucking better. Um, so yeah, that definitely helps, and I feel like I'm good right now with the routine that I'm in with steps and cardios three times per week just now, three twenty minute sessions. And again, if I were to miss them, I'd definitely feel it within appetite, digestion, and everything. So I think that is a good point to make as well for people like feeling like, oh yeah, I can't get much food, and like use cardio as a tool simply to boost your appetite more. Definitely, definitely. Thing me seventy five kg last time, by the way. Like, I don't know how well you can see that. So, like, it wasn't, like, soft, like, horribly, but obviously compared to now. Mm. You just look you just look young. Yeah. Side chest. Look, yeah. Right. Just like a young man. Yeah. That oh, was, yeah, that's... Oh. That was me 17. That was 17. He- you've, you've grown into your head a little bit now. Yeah, mate. you have. Mate, my, <laughs> my little young face is coming back as well now, though, that I'm getting chubby cheeks. Good. That's what we want. Younger. I got... I got ID'd for a monster yesterday. Yeah. Right? I'm tw- I am 28 next month. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I am 28 next month. I'm old. I'm not where, old. Where, where did you so, get ID'd? So, Tesco. Right? Yeah, mate, they're so bad for it. So, I walked in there, picked up a monster, right? Go to the checkout, self checkout. He's like, sorry to ask, mate. He's like, have you, got a, uh, have you got ID for that monster? I was like, I'm 28 next month, so I'll take it as a compliment and obviously just cracked a joke. You know, I'm not offended by it. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah. It is what it is. Showed him my ID. Job job done. He's like, yeah, yeah, no worries, mate. Thanks for that. He goes, uh, just, uh, you, know, you know, if you gr- if you grow some facial hair, like you probably won't get ID'd as much. And I went, I can't grow facial hair. <laughs> I was like, what fucking kind of... Res- what kind of response is that? I was like, what well, if I don't want to grow facial hair? I can't even grow facial hair if I wanted to anyway. I'd love to grow some facial hair, but I can't at all. Maybe with time, but no, I can't. You wouldn't either. suit it. You wouldn't suit it, mate. I like I like the young... I hate guys with facial hair. They're so ugly, aren't they? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> screw them, guys. Either. Yeah, <laughs> screw, screw them, guys. I, mine's not... I would not class mine as facial hair. It's just sometimes Scruff. I need to have a shave. Yeah. Do you, can you grow a beard or not? Me? No. No, that's a, that's a good nah. sign, though. 
That's a good sign. Uh, Maybe all of us have just got horrifically low testosterone. I mean, you especially, Tom. That's it. No, so I th- I think someone someone correct me on on the podcast. Whoever's listening who knows more than probably Mo if he listens to this. I was going to say Mo, Mo will know anything about hair. Yeah. So like typically guys that have got beards from a younger age, like you know you always got that friend in school that grows like an unreal beard at the age of fourteen, <laughs> yeah. right? If you notice, there's like a little bit of a pattern where those guys typically like get more recession in their hair mm. quicker. So they're yeah, typically yeah. more predisposed to like lose their hair. And the reasons why is because you've got and- androgen receptors in your skin and your face so that when obviously, you know, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone start to kick in, um, those people that are more sensitive to it, they get more facial hair. Mm. But then that also leads them then to be predisposed to like balding right because the more sensitivity they've got in their scalp to androgens you know they then die off those cells um that's like my brother for instance point point proven my brother's got like a full thick beard i haven't he's got thin and hair i haven't so yeah, if neither of us can if we can't really grow very good beards it's probably a good thing for like our actual you know yeah. hair on a head but it's probably not the same thing for everyone but it's interesting I I think as well as an adult shaving is the worst part about being not a child. That's the yeah. worst part about competing. Hundred percent, in my opinion, one million percent. See, I'm to shave your whole body, bollock. No, nah, so mate, you good. definitely just have like one little hair on your back here, one little hair on your chest that you just get yeah, your girlfriend you to pluck, pluck out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Creepy person. <laughs> hey, Josh, what 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 do you do for it? Do you veat or do you shave it? Yeah, I tried that. I tried veating, and oh. it did not work at all. Um, didn't give any rashes in, it just didn't work. It was disappointing. I wasted like 15 quid. And then I went and bought, like, because my barber was like, Yeah, you should get some like decent kind of electric shavers. And then, like, you know, the foiler thing, like, that they do, like, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. the proper bold, like, down the bottom of your hair. And then when you, like, touch it, it's like sharp. Um, it's like that feeling. Uh, it gets it really, really fucking bold. So I bought a, like, quite expensive electric shaver and then a foiler and then just done the electric shaver and then went over the rest of my body with a foiler after. Right. Like, like two hours, man. It was horrible. Two hours? Yeah. Right. Veet everywhere. Wish it Le- worked. Leave it. Wait, it wait, wait. Worked. Leave it for 15 to 20 minutes, longer than what it says. Mm. Exfoliating gloves on. Yep. And then just rub the living daylights out yourself. Off. I reckon I like it, to probably ten to fifteen minutes, and then I also used an exfoliator. I went and bought one after using it, and still didn't work. So you annoying. need to be careful with V. You need yeah. to be careful with it, man. I've got the worst story from from prep with V. So, <laughs> uh, like last two preps I've ever done, I've always <laughs> shaved. And I've always, sh- balls or always shaved, <laughs> right? Now I've got I've got sensitive skin, but I've always shaved. Never had an issue with it. It's always worked for me. But I was like, you know what? Nah. Everyone talks about veating. Right. I'm going to veat, right? So, got it, right? I think I even bought, like, the sensitive skin one. Mm. And I, on the armpits, I did, uh, are you supposed to do it on the armpits? Yeah, it's difficult on the armpits. So, I put it on there, right? And I put on this, like, like rubber glove. And I fully, like, uh, massaged it into my skin, right? And I think by doing that, it's, like really saturated the skin and within about 10 minutes i had the worst burning sensation on my armpits ever jumped straight in the shower got all that shit off yeah not even like the next day i woke up and had like chemical burns all in my armpits and i've only got to get a tan the same day so i'm then i'm then in this is the for the uk up show and uh i was there in a tanning booth getting my armpit sprayed and oh my god like or, they were just red raw as well, and even when I was like posing on stage, my armpits, which <laughs> mate the the tanning the tanning gun's usually nice and cold though. Do that not like nope <sighs> nope. Mate, you see sometimes I'm like Baltic, like shivering, freezing when I was getting my tan done. Then you're stood there in a wee sock, and your wellies just a bit went back inside your body. You know, like when some you poke, a, you poke in a snail your... in the eye, and the, the, the snail's eye just goes. Yeah, exactly. I, I I don't I don't wear a sock, mate. Men's physique, mate. You wear boxes. You done. You done. Obviously, what have you done? Germany and shit. Like European shows. Why are they all just bollock naked? Oh, every single one. Actually? Yeah, they yeah, yeah, mate. Box. They were what? stood at like, the the fan, just like like three like 40, 50 year old guys, like literally hurdled right next to each other, just in, in line of the fan. And I was just stood there like that little fucking 18, 19 year old Josh, like. Oh, I joined him, mate. Josh. Yeah. 
Can I feel in yours? Germany. Can I feel mine? I saw. No. Is is Josh froze? Oh, shit, you're frozen. He has for a second. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Hey, He's we're good. We're good. He's here. He's back. Josh. He's back. Mm. In Germany, mm. there was naked women. Oh yeah. It was oh, like yeah. oh, it was horrific. I just went and did like a little bit of a recce of like, oh, where do you go? All that um, kind of stuff. And I just saw some things and I'm like, no, nah, this is this is this is wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure there was like there is, some you know. in good shape. And obviously you're not gonna be prying on no, them. Mate, like... No, no, Tom. What? It was like masters. Okay. No, no. Oh wrinkly. Oh. Yeah, I just saw him. I was like, right, okay, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, seen too much already, guys. I, I won't be able to sleep ever again. It was funny because after I competed, oh, what has he got here? Mm. Exactly. It's not That was when it's fresh. It got so much yeah. worse than that. I had Bad. like scabs all over my armpits. It was disgusting. Oh, that. Mate, yeah. see, you you from the tan. Did you not get like some kind of disease? There we go, look. Oh, you yeah. can't see that. Pro- no, I can yeah, see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not explained properly, but... It's like Mate, we're watching and- the show, like me and my girlfriend, because like Casey came out to Romania with me, um, and we were watching the Masters together. And I was like, I've seen his dick. His one's really <laughs> shaped. His one's wrinkly. His one's fucking massive. And we we're all just sitting there. I was just laughing. She was, like, "This is brilliant." Um, but yeah, it was so strange. I just did not expect it at all. I just walked through and they were all just stood there bollock naked. I was like, this is interesting. Do, do you know what the crazy thing is? They're probably looking at you and thinking, who is this weirdo with a sock over his dick? No, yeah. mate, I, had, I had Tony on as well. Tony the Tiger. Yeah, oh, mate, they're definitely thinking you're the freak. Yeah. What do you mean, Tony the Tiger? That's my, my sock. Mate, I should have it in here. <laughs> no <laughs> way. You've got it, like, it. On, in a frame on the wall. Yeah, oh. mate, I, I wear it every time I go for a sunbed. I cover up my dick in a sunbed. What? Why? Do you not just wear underwear? Nah, because I want to get uh, a good tan everywhere. You know, I don't want to have to tan lines. You're going to burn your arsehole. Yeah, that's, that's part of the fun, mate. Oh, yeah. true. My arsehole's took an absolute beating, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Is that... All right. I wonder, I wonder why Finn seems so happy in Vegas. <laughs> I'm nah, trying to get a picture that isn't like, really bad of Tony. Imagine just getting straddled by Reese. Oh my god! It'd be like I'd rather get attacked by a fucking grizzly bear. Me and all. Like a fridge falling on top of you. This is what Me. we were, <laughs> what we were discussing as well before we went to Vegas because I weighed the same as Sanaya pretty much at that time. So, oh I was my like, god, it would be about the same. Oh my days. <laughs> but I, I can imagine when Reese walks backwards, right? All you can hear is beep, beep. You see, Tony. Oh, Josh, oh, get his council, mate. Cancelled. <laughs> we're cancelled. <laughs> You can censor it out if you need but to. But Talbot Balf is looking at this thinking, oh, yes. Oh, that, that weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's asked a question that I'm going to save until the end. Oh, he's usually oh. got good questions, doesn't he? Yeah, the, he's, a fant- he's a beauty. Oh the one gosh. when we were in Manchester. You are? He asked a really strange question when we were in Manchester. He, he did indeed. That, that didn't make the over. podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, gents, um, I have another topic of conversation that I th- that we've not touched upon yet, Tom. But I um, thought I'd bring it up because we obviously discussed it whilst we were in Manchester, mm-hmm. and that is the UK, the FBA's Instagram post <laughs> stating that they do not reply <laughs> to DMs. That was that was outstanding. That post. That was something else. Yeah. It wasn't the one, was it? No, no. It's like, it's your it personal, wasn't the one. It's not your personal account to share your opinions. It's your business account. No, oh, mate. Bizarre. Bizarre. You're representing the UK as a natural bodybuilding federation, and then you are describing social media users as um, 12-year-olds. They were trying to fuck their... Followers. Yeah. Yeah. In DMG, it means you're trying to fuck them or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah. If you if and you missed it, like, listen. I actually have a life. It was like we don't read our DMs because I actually have a life and don't spend more than two seconds on Instagram per day. Yeah. It's just strange. Like you should. You should. If you're the UK FBA, you should be all in on it. You should be. This is what yeah, primarily a built their business. Market. Yeah, exactly. To market your business because a lot yeah. of bodybuilders will be using Instagram to look at other bodybuilders hey. and to see who's got the best lighting for the stage. Celebrate it. Best yeah. And, 
Yeah, exactly. Like you know, you know, like marketing is yeah. it, like to look at doing ads or to reach a certain demographic of people. It's so expensive. Mm. With Instagram, especially with a page like that, you've got it for free. Yeah. To not utilize it is is criminal. Yeah, it's so you. so unintelligent. And then yeah, to make comments on people that are going to give you money, right, and compete in your federation and grow your federation because you can't be asked to, it just blows, absolutely blows my mind. So um, I obviously commented on it saying, um, pretty sure you've just um, insulted 99% of your competitors. And their response was, the truth hurts. Then an hour later, it got changed to like a formal one. It did. I it did. I it did. It mean, did. I really like the UK DFB like actually at the shows, so I'm not going to fucking dig at them. But it was a little strange. It was. I oh. love the UK FBA. I love how passionate people are about it. I love you know even like the people that run the UK FBA. I know how passionate they are about it too, and yeah. it's <clears throat> that's why it's just they need. It's just it's a bit of a, like a shame. To you know, to it's a bit of a shame because yeah. like you know, people I I tag the UK FBA in my posts. I know other people want to tag the UK FBA in the posts. There's so much opportunity there for the community to be so much stronger and for like you know natural bodybuilding, which you know arguably the UK FBA right now at this current moment is the biggest federation in the UK and the most competitive one. You know, it's up there. They've got you know had the most shows and whatnot, and it's provided the most opportunity and the best platform for a lot of people. So then to like alienate your audience or even shoot them down a little bit and you know tarnish that community it's such a it's just a shame really in my yeah. opinion you know I it's, 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 a a shame. it's a bit yeah. of a shame you know and it's like it's even from like the perspective of like you could fba they could we were, we're trying to grow natural bodybuilding you know not uh stay in like the stone age essentially yeah, yeah it's just know? like kind of set in their like older ways and it's um, even with like filming at the venues, like yeah, won't allow anything. Now, obviously, I get that, but like if if someone could even maybe pay like a like what's it called? Yeah, just just a, uh, just a fee to be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Uh, a videographer's pass. Yeah, because mm. obviously that videography is going to be used to create a YouTube video to be like UK DFBA finals. Watch this, and then someone's like, "Fucking hell, that looks sick." That mm. I would want to do that next time next time I compete, but then they're not allowing themselves to actually be put out there because they're limiting videography. And again, of course, I get that if it was free, like you're not letting someone kind of... I've, just... I've thought about this, right? Why don't they want videographers there? Yeah. Right. And my, I, like, having been to multiple federations that allow it, I think it's because it's not that good. You know, at the venues, they're not great. The backdrop. I really, really like the, the finals, the Athena one. That was yeah. shit hot. Really good. But every single show should be like that. If you go to a PCA show, have you ever been to a PCA show? It's, yeah, it's I went good. to a Scottish one. Again, went with Matt. It was pretty good. So you go to a PCA I'm show. A wank, but it's a good show. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's 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 the Federation's job. They can't they can't decide how good the athletes are. They can only put on a good show. Yeah. And you go to a PCA show, you know exactly what you're getting. You're getting good lighting, good photographers, good backdrops. You're also getting some dubstep with the 60 second pose there. Exactly. You know, pose it's just, regardless of the point, like PCA, the PCA, bigger than, in my opinion, bigger than two bros in the UK. It is the biggest federation in yeah, the UK. Yeah. And ever since I competed with them back in the day, it's clear to see that they've always been on the cusp of like the latest and best things at bodybuilding yeah, shows. Think like, about all the, 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 the innovations and, and all the posts, literally, on yeah. the show day. Like, it's hard to find some. If you're thinking, oh, fuck, they look really good. I want to go see what they actually look like on that video. It's hard to find them because they've got that many posts up and a few of them here and there will do very well. They've got loads of stories up. They repost shit. Um, it's like, make the most of social media. It's actually your biggest tool to grow, whatever it may be, coaching, like, business, anything, pretty much and then this day and age social media is your biggest tool so why not yeah you know, it's like right of, all, of all bodybuilding federations in the world right there's a lot of them like actually, for, for, even like shows the arnold's right they don't need just just through like the prestige of the yeah. arnold's they don't need to have glyco glyco productions wherever it is you know glico, they don't need to have yeah. glico you know 
they don't need to probably have these people you know in order to grow the arnold's because the arnold's just going to grow anyway it's the arnold's it's the ifbb yet they still go to so much effort to make it the absolute yeah, how best good show ever yeah, the videos. yeah they look sick exactly you know I exactly that's, like, that's i think that's their main point the uk dfb like the argument that, may, that they make that it's like disrespectful to the like professional like photographer but i'm like that's just photography like they're not capturing how the day goes and what the experience is like that's literally just stage shots so like yeah. videography like someone's not paid a vid- videographer to just simply take photos i could put mm. money on that like yeah. anyone that pays a videographer to be at that show is to create some form of content around it a video youtube video instagram this and that like it's not to take photos it's for a video to also help promote the federation that show to show how good it is and then again, like there's no reason why you should kind of be against that, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. Agree. Agree. Um Lee, if you are listening, I've seen that you've been on the Natura- Natty News Daily podcast. You are more than welcome to come onto our podcast, mate. Um <laughs> start scrapping. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely think it'd be good. Mate, I yeah, really can't like see it. any negatives. So nice to me. Um when we were out in Romania, I looked after Casey and I really well. So I, I do really, really like Lee. Um, in terms of like in person, he's lovely, but again, sometimes just on like the social media and stuff, I think it would be good to stay, take a step back from that. Like personal opinions and stuff. Like obviously, if he's got like a personal account, then that'd be sick, and he can put his opinions out there on that. But on like the actual UK DFP page, like trying to keep it a bit more professional. But again, Lee's fucking lovely in person. I, I can't say anything bad about him. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it's like <clears throat> for me as well as like again, I've always promoted the UK FBA. But almost like a post like that does makes me not want to tag them. Makes not, yeah. me not want because I don't want to associate myself yeah. with something like that. You know, that's putting out messages like that. And again, it's is it the worst post in the world? Like, no, it's not. But at the end of the day, like you know, it, it is a professional federation. It should be a professional federation. You know, yeah, and it should be ran like EG that. does a lot for it, like, to try and modernize it. Yeah, like with mm. NBW with like all the posts and stuff. But I think. Like, obviously, uh, I guess Lee would also be thinking like, oh, yeah, I don't need to pay for someone to, say, run my social media or to help with that because or they have probably one of the best federations in the UK and, like, just simply our name and this and that can kind of carry us. But it could be so much better if ran better on the um, social medias. But, again, it's, it's whether he wants to do that or not. Hey, jo- Josh, you should do it, mate. Me? Yeah. Yeah, sack off coaching and just get a monthly payment from one in the... J- just put reels on, mate. Yeah, seventeen natty, fifty-five kg. <laughs> Who's this? Is this uh, supposed to be the UK DFB? Yeah, when I when, if I if I had to do that, twenty-seven natty, eighty kg doesn't have the same ring to it, does it, mate? Uh, blow up easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't do it nah, anymore. Just, everyone just sees that. Me. Everyone sees that reel and they dislike it. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's dried up. Yeah, Tell dried me, up. You you would get you would get abused. Abused. I know. <laughs> Get that on but, TikTok. All your mates will come out of the woodwork. Oh, imagine <laughs> looking like that and being naughty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Oh, All right. Dear. Boys, do we have some questions? Questions. Yeah. I've got a good one if we want to start off with that. Go on then. Jasper B. Fit asked, when hitting it from the back, do you perform LPs? Lending partials when headed from the back. <laughs> Little Jasper's asked that question. Yes, it's a dark he's definitely horse. he's been rude, isn't he? Mm-hmm. What Lent do you mean? Partials, length and partials while heading it from the back. Josh, did you just <laughs> thrust then to imagine it? Yeah, yeah. you did, yeah. did. I just saw you give it a you little might. pump. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's so that's how it works. You've got a hit lengthen partials, so you need to do it. Practice it tonight. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan of over. I'm not a fan of from the bag. Nah? You're not? No. Nah. Uncultured. Uncultured. Yeah, Josh, just, Josh is just a fan of the baby maker. Partials. Baby making position only. Oh yeah. Mm. Only. Only. <laughs> <laughs> Did Jasper ask any more weird questions? Um sadly not, no. Oh. I will try length and partials, Jasper. I'll let you know, mate. Yeah, we'll report Who back. Wins, <laughs> I'm a you don't know. At the, the Arnold's. I volunteer. Oh, yes. 
Oh <laughs> yes. Get a little bit get a little bit more meat on that bunda, mate, and uh we'll uh, <laughs> exactly. we'll, uh, we'll talk then, all right? I don't want any striations, mate. I don't want any yeah, striations. I've got, I've got a fat ass now, all my glute lines are gone. All you're my weight like... has went to my glutes and my face. Fatty fork. batty. Yeah, exactly. You'll cut you'll get cut on his cock sake. <laughs> 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 I don't want that monkey monkey bone digging into me, mate. I'm I'm good. <laughs> oh yeah, right. My boy uh, Tom Hermitage has asked. Oh, we again another another one on the female from biggest Wait, turn on. I'm biggest questions. to you are. You did put saucy questions. I did. Fair. I did put saucy questions. Yeah, you you right. on I, I've asked for this. All my yeah, questions well. are saucy. Um, biggest turn on and biggest turn off in a partner. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I'm Josh T, I'm, you go first. Oh. I can see his brain ticking away. Who's going first? Me. Yes. Well, I've got to turn off, not turn on yet, so I can go turn off first. Um just being lazy as fuck and not having any ambitions and goals and drives and shit. I feel like that's such a generic answer, but I do think it's true. If they don't have structure, that's it, game over. Yeah. <laughs> if, they don't, they don't. <laughs> yeah. if they don't wake up at the exact same time every single morning, have a bottle of hydroflow, go out on a walk, um, and do check and, and No, no, it's not. It's not hydroflow. It's that pit stop thing. Rise and shine. shine. Shit hot. I know you just can't fucking try it, but I'll maybe give you some with Arnold's, and you can secretly tell me how good it is. Mm, maybe. maybe, maybe. Elite don't sell it. So pop, pop maybe those guys. Not. Never know. Maybe, I don't know if pit stop would ever like branch out to giving it to other people, but that is good. It's really good. Um, I reckon my I'm gonna go with an off. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go with an on. Oh yeah. Cooking. Mm. Cooking. That is the way to my heart. If the girl can <laughs> if Annabella can cook. Oh cook. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. What did you think I said? Yeah, you got cooking like a, a hook. I was like, what the fuck is hooking? Yeah, mate. Arr. Yeah. Hooking. yeah. The rusty yeah. hook. Do you know pirate. what that is? Bit of pirate pirate stuff. Rusty cook, I don't know what the rusty cook is. No, the rust, rusty hook. <laughs> don't worry oh, about it, mate. You're too young. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, biggest on. biggest turn off for me, just straight up, is just smoking. Oh, oh such a good show that. Oh, actually, such such a a good good you know what I mean. Of about forty turn offs. Mm. Yeah, like, hey, hey, Scottish <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People yeah, that smell. A pure JK mm. Scottish accent is really bad, though. It's terrifying. Yeah, you see, like, a pure rough Scottish accent in a girl. Ugh. Like, it just makes them seem like a mad fucking... I don't know. you got quite yeah. quite a nice Scottish accent. Quite subtle, you know? Thank you. I've had to had to make it clearer. For yeah, I bet, I bet you when you were, like, with your Scottish mates, it's uh, full-blown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh mate, imagine what they're going to be like at the Arnold. Six Scottish lads walking around going, "Hey lad, look at that! <laughs> it's Dorian Yates, man." <laughs> We're all going to be in kilts. That's it. Oh please, oh, please God. make that happen. Please do it. Uh, maybe maybe um, Owen can bring out a kilt. Biggest turn so, ons. Has everyone said that? Yeah, uh, man, I'm not said man yet. Um, Go on. Hmm. I would I would say is just just in just in general someone that just looks after himself like they go to the gym you know dress up nice just someone that looks after himself is that is that is that too broad yeah probably mate oh tom be specific you're single here mate you need to be you need to be putting it out there uh... what want. and what equally what you don't want yeah, smoking. So it's like smoking is a enough. Uh, there's there's been multiple occasions on like nights out, right, where you see someone nice, and then like you can just smell like the stench of like cigarettes on them, and it's just like, mm-hmm. oh man, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, not not against anyone that smokes, but like at the same time, it's just not people fucking idiots. On a on a future podcast, we should do like funny dating experiences. Oh God! I can, uh, won't be I can me give you some that. of them. I've I've dated one person my whole life. Well, you, since I was fourteen, five no and a half way. years. Five and a half years with Casey. Yeah, that's Jeez. crazy. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Are you gonna marry her? Yeah, I reckon so. 
It's just uh, it, like, it's all relative. Like even if, like you're like you're way too young to be able to say. Like even though you've been yeah. together five, to, like he's together in, five years, which in, 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 is a re- relatively long time. It's like yeah. you're still young. It's still way too young to be able to like say something like that. I reckon. Yeah, even when we were talking about like moving, like um, when we were down in Manchester, and you're like, "Oh, would you ever think to like move down here or somewhere around here?" I was like, "Yeah, that would be cool." But Casey's still in uni. Um, mm. She's got three years left of that, so like, I wouldn't move down and move away, you know. So it's not easy, like, because you're so young and like you change a lot. The, your 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 opportunities, you know, life goals and whatnot. Things for her change a lot as well, and it's like if you're able to kind of work through that together, that says a lot about like you know yeah. you two, I guess. Yeah, like huge. Because yeah. I I couldn't imagine being in a relationship from that young for that long. No, neither. Yeah, it's mad. I, I, I don't know, like, I didn't have a girlfriend until I was like sixteen. And it, I, no what no one actually took interest in me until I was like sixteen. <laughs> so I was a proper goon when I was younger. Still am. But I've just got a little <laughs> bit more muscle now. No. Yeah. A little bit. Maybe yeah, maybe a teeny bit. Maybe a bit of regression <laughs> <actually. laughs> Yeah, I just get more attention from guys now. Um oh, yeah, the best thing. speaking of Oh, is this the, t- the question of this no, guy? No, 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 no. This is oh. not the question. Thomas Narangis, right? He's actually <laughs> said, when answering, please don't disclose the account or person asking. It's Thomas dot Narangis, <laughs> spelled N-E-R-A-N-G-I-S. He has asked four questions. Okay. Height. Oh. Mm-hmm. Five Answer. foot ten. Five foot eight. Five foot, nine and a half. Siblings. One brother. Two stepsisters, one Ooh, brother, yeah. one sister. I've got one sister that I like and one brother that I like. <laughs> and then I've got a few more, but that's that's it. When, oh, no, I've already asked that one. Um, and then the final question is, can you do the peck bound or peck pop like Terry Crews? Like he asks every frigging every week. Time. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll Thomas Narangis, Thomas Dot Narangis, get a life, mate. Get a life. Tom, he loves it. Your turn. What Peck questions? Right now. Yeah. I'm not peck bouncing. <laughs> get out of here. Um, <clears throat> if you had the choice to stop one crime from ever happening again, but you had to commit it, what oh would it be? Oh, my God. I just came up with like loads in my head and I was like, oh, my, I'm not committing that. <laughs> If you had the choice to stop one crime forever happening again, but you had to commit it, what do you get, would do you get caught it for it? Be? I don't know. Doesn't say. I guess if you do a good enough job at it, no. Auto theft. Mate, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, car I can never get caught for it. Just yeah. fucking steal some stupidly expensive car and then never get caught with it and sell it, make all the money, or just get the drive it and boom. Yeah, and then no one else's car is getting exactly. nicked, so therefore yeah, yeah, that's exactly insurance would be cheaper. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Cryptocurrency. Well, well, crypto fraud. No, that's a good answer. I'll just, I'll just make bank that's from it all. at the same time, because what will happen, right, is I will steal the crypto. I'll get away with it. It will never happen again. Therefore, the future of crypto is more stable. Therefore, the price will then go you invest up, all hopefully. Back and then lose all your money again. It all back in, and I win, win, win. Depends whose crypto you buy, mate. If you bought mine, it's worth about 300 quid. I So I I threw in 750 quid, like, um, just as, like, just having a bit of fun with it, like, a year ago. It's now at 2,200 pounds. A year ago? Yep. Oh, Oh, mate. I'll play around with it in lockdown when I was bored. Set it and forget it. Yeah, right. that's what I've You're done. You're going to do anything. Change that and forget it. Really? I, know I, bought oh, I bought and it was like high, apparently. Uh, okay. And then it's just kind of gone like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's at an all-time high right now. It's at $72,000. So the 750 quid I put in a year ago is now £2,200. Good work. Nice one, mate. There was a boy in Curry's that I worked with that put like 10 grand in and it sits at like 30, 35 now. And they just, I'm like, why don't you pull it out? And he's just like, oh, I don't really care about it. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like, it is, like it's it's going to go to like a hundred grand and beyond. Yeah. Like you know, so my my plans now. This is not financial advice. Is uh, once it reaches the peak, which no one knows where it is. Say for instance, it goes like two and a half grand. Pull out the profits. I'm going to wait a little bit. Wait for it to go back down to correct, which it will do. And then I'm just going to throw a few grand in there and just do the exact same thing what I did and just leave it. Just forget about it. This is board shorts and banter financial advice brought to you by Tom Stockton. Yeah. I don't I don't know shit about crypto, but all I know is I've not really ever lost money on any of my investments, and that's just because I buy and just leave it. I'm a really good gambler. Uh spent three pounds in Las Vegas <laughs> and then got kicked out because I looked too young. Well, really? you too young. Yeah. I was too young, yeah. I, I have a new favorite Instagram account of a guy that bets 10 cents for every thousand followers that he's got. And he's up to like a quarter of a million followers. <laughs> really? And he's literally putting on like 25 grand, 30 grand bets. Oh, and they're coming in. He's like, he's like 300K up. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. And he does it every day. It's brilliant. It's my favorite account. Um, <laughs> this is a good question. And I'm curious to find your answers. Progress Forwards has asked, "What's what are your favourite big set tracks to listen to? Ooh. I used to watch June, the second June recently. I knew it was going to no. be Hans Zimmer. Yeah, I'm just such a fucking little AJ fanboy. That's it. I was literally about to say, such a little oh. AJ Morris. AJ yeah. top paste. sets. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a song from that which is really good when he rides the worm. Um, it's called Worm Raid, for funnily enough. Okay. It's like when he becomes like when he secures himself as like the fucking the big dog. Um and it's like really, really cinematic. And then other ones, it depends what movement it is though. Like some movements have require some like slow kind of like cinematic shit, but then other ones, like if it's a really stable like press, I just got on some really aggressive shit with like Mike Tyson screaming in my ear or something and just like rag it about. Like on SoundCloud. Mike Tyson. Come on, yeah. Jess. You little bitch. You, you gotta faggot. do it, Jess. Uh, don't, don't stop until it's spinal. <laughs> <laughs> mate, he's proper. There's some like good SoundCloud audios. Just pure, like really aggressive music. And then <laughs> they're good. I can imagine I can imagine you <laughs> imagine you finishing your set. <laughs> I broke my back. <laughs> my back is broken. <laughs> There's some good ones. I'll send you them. Um, you I like. Uh, I'm a drum and bass fanboy, so I like "Immortal" ah. by Metric. I like uh, "Get Down" by K9, and also. Um, but a bit, Tom, a bit. Tommy asked for one song. Okay. Um, <laughs> Too sexy. Uh, you back in a minute. So retreat. Ah, ret- ret- retreat. 2018 yeah, by Chase Status. My my my. Go to is... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, not another. No. Mumford and Sons. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> I will wait for you. <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> you said... <laughs> that on a chest press, mate, there's nothing like it. Right, right, right. Listen, the next kind of like training reel that you put up and it's really intense, you've got yeah. to put that track over it, please. Mate, yeah. that, this, this, viral. This, this, there's loads of Mumford and Sons that, you know, you can just go balls to the wall on. Uh, no, my, my favourite is Experience by Ludovico Einaudi, which is a bit of classical music. Uh, nice. He's very nice. He's very good. Oh, I quick. Did I miss anything or was it more solid? I like, it. I like a bit of Travis Scott as well. What was, okay. what was Josh Crogan's answer? Have you Experience answered? by Ludovico Einaudi. Oh, my God. What what genre are we talking? Is that connected? classical? Yeah, it's yeah, a like, very good like classical, classical song. Yeah, this is yeah, like yeah. Um, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that that's good. The um, can, can you, you can you hear the music? Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Can you hear the music? Is that the name of it? No idea. Yeah, that one. I believe so. Uh, Jack Jan. Karen, Karen. Karen. Oh, I love Julian. Julian, is he coming to the Arnold's? I don't think so. No. Oh, Julian, you're a letdown. He's ridiculous in person. Drop the photo of Josh's bare ass through the window at the All In Bodybuilding shoot. Never. Is it Order some clothes first. Yeah. He's got Julian some. Got, yeah, Julian gets sent out free clothes. Did he? Yeah. 
Oh, Dan, Dan's a wizard now. He can see who's he can see who's going to be getting all attention, mate. In the past, like two or three weeks, he's went from like yeah, he's went from like six hundred followers to like two thousand two hundred, and it's not been a certain like reel or something that's blown up. It's literally just like posts of his physique, a couple of reels here and there, like collabing with AJ, um, and shit. Like he's got a lot more followers recently. A lot of people kind of looking up to him. Good. Um, so, yeah, that's that's great. That's kind of like the the way that you want your following to go up. You know. Yeah. From from my like other bodybuilder looking at him, going, yeah. "You're good, you mate. I'm going to follow your journey." I seen mm-hmm. AJ was saying that like one of the AJ called him the best natural bodybuilder to ever live. Um, commented on his post saying like, "Oh, this is sick." It was some guy that used to compete with the BMBF, um, back in like probably like early two thousands, like along with Vicky, um, black guy, but I don't know what his name is. Oh. Of course he's black. Of course he's. Yeah, mate, they're fucking. It's just every every up. every good bodybuilding story starts with them being black. Yeah, mate, I'll see if I can find his name. And ends in yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> are we oh get? God. Have we got any more questions ready? Um, I don't. When, I when is that YouTube video dropping? Or will it drop? Or will it? Oh, mate, it? I've got I've got so many YouTube videos to actually get out. I need to I need to do stuff. The people need to see my bare bottom. It's I a was, very, was, very funny clip. I, I was proud of that moment. The amount of laugh that I got there, I was like, uh, uh, um, yeah. I'll, I'll take it, was, it was very funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say anything on the podcast. I'm going to save it. <laughs> Favourite pre-workout meals? If someone doesn't know what mine is, then they're not a true Joshy Fit follower. <laughs> you just might not even know either. I'll test you. Uh, wrap and chips. Well done, sir. Well done. Every day I post it, mate. People like some people actually like, rely on that video. I just do it out of like just to say what session I've got. But like, if I don't post it or like I don't crack the monster open on it, like some people will message me and be like, "Why didn't you crack the monster?" And I'm like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> I think Mad. some people need to get a life, mate. That's, yeah. that's a bit odd. Yeah. yeah. My favorite is chili con carne and rice. It's what I used to do with pita breads as well. Yeah, with it's a pita breads. And you load up the pita breads and... Oh, yeah, easy card. Sets nicely. I like, I like peanut butter and banana bagels with a shake. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Gents, my tea's ready. I can hear it. I can smell it. We are going to finish off with Talbot Balfe's horrific question. Oh, this, this, this is the bad guy here. Come on in. Would you rather have sex with the prettiest lady boy or with the oldest lady? Prettiest lady boy. (laughs) Josh, what did you say? I was going to be... Yeah, I'm going to go lady boy now. You're going to go lady boy? Wow. It's 2024, boys. Come on. (laughs) I would actually go oldest lady, but I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine. (laughs) I thought you were going to say a story about you. <laughs> no, this is definitely not about me. However, the guy is also called Josh, and it's oh. not you either, or me. Yeah? Definitely not you. Um, I obviously, I lived in Australia, and I lived in a, um, an Air, not, not an Airbnb, what's it called? A hostel. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we had all different characters, you know, come and go. It's where dreams begin, mate. Yeah. Good stories. Oh, mate, I've got some quality stories from it. Um, and there was this guy, we'll call him Josh, not me, uh, who went to Amsterdam before his trip to Australia. And I don't know how the conversation came up, but he was telling us all about how his mates had like, as like a farewell gift, they'd paid for him to have a nice time with a lady. Mm. And he went into this room area, whatever you call it, yep. brothel. And uh, the lady started to pleasure him and <laughs> and said to him, I want you to fuck me up the arse. So he was like, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Cool. Like, he was going for it, really enjoying it, having a nice time. And she rolled over and had a massive penis. <laughs> yes. No. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and he was and I, I was like oh my god what did you do like fight him he went oh well I thought I could either you know, like kick off and try and get my money back he done it or just 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 Carry finish 
And because I've already done it, I may as well finish. I was like, well, what did you do? He went, oh, well, I just, I just finished because I'd already done the bad thing. <laughs> I just saw it through. I've, I've changed my mind now. I'm going with the old ah. lady. The, 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 the thought of that the thought yeah. realizes yeah. me yeah. now. Yeah. Imagine yeah. turning her, no. him or her over and it just what? flops around like, and it's just yeah, looking at you. Yeah. And like, it's just like that as well because they're loving it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. I changed old lady. Old um, lady. Old, old lady. Yeah. That's definitely Talbot. an old lady. Talbot, we appreciate it, mate. You always bring yeah. the gold. Thank you, mate. Also, uh, Eid Mubarak to you, brother. See that you're celebrating the holy month. Okay, Eid Mubarak. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. There we go. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> what a beautiful way to end the podcast. Uh, if you made it this far, you're probably going to have nightmares for the rest of this week. But gentlemen, really good, uh, thank you. One. Josh, good. thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. We love, we love having you on, mate. Can't wait to see you this week. It's going to yeah. be good. Yeah. It's going to be we'll good. We'll look after you, mate. We'll look uh, after you. Oh, one last thing. Tom, I've bought us a microphone mm -hmm. and we're going to go and interview people at the Arnold's and we're going to do a YouTube video for the podcast channel. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah. and it's going to be great. Phenomenal. Well, okay, we'll plan it. We'll plan it. Well, no, don't even plan it. No, off, we'll just wing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a natty or well, not. So I thought, big, yeah, yeah. I was going to say some big roided guy and ask him if he's on gear. And yeah, then yeah. So I'm going to do that and hope that I don't get smacked. And then we're also just going to have a QA. and a I want to try and get someone else to do an outro for the podcast. Mm. Okay. Do you, know, do you know what we should Dorian. do as well? Dorian. All right, guys. This is the board shots and shit <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I, want it to be, I want it to be him kicking off. Why the fucking hell would I want to do that? <laughs> do you know what we should do, right? Go up to the biggest guys and ask them how long they've been natural for and then go to the smallest guys and ask them how long they've been enhanced for. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Shall we do, do it? <laughs> those videos do really, really well on TikTok, by the way. Like, see if you cut them up and just like do them, like they blow up a lot of the time. People just I haven't seen them. anyone do that. How long have you been enhanced? <laughs> I'm not. Well, come on, mate. You don't need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Come on. on. And then, like, the biggest guy, like, what's your biggest advice to the natural bodybuilders? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> as a natural lifter yourself. Yeah. yeah. As, a, oh, as a fine natural lifter yourself, what is the number one piece of. Yeah, we're, do we're doing it. We're doing oh, it. Come on. Let's go. Right. Love you all. Bye. Right, goodbye. Bye.